from Pauley Pavilion in Los Angeles, California, the Notre Dame Basketball Network presents a classic matchup between the number three ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and number five ranked Bruins of UCLA. Brought to you this evening by Dotson. Nobody demands more from a Dotson than Dotson. We are driven. And by Schlitz. If you don't have Schlitz, you don't have Gusto. And by Coachman Recreational Vehicles, your sensible choice for family fun and freedom. Good evening, everyone. The importance of this game cannot be overstated. Uh, you have two of the top teams in the nation playing, first of all. You have one of the top uh, all-time uh, rivalries going. Notre Dame is the only team ever to beat UCLA at Pauley Pavilion. Tonight, they're going to, be tried to, they're going to try to do that again. My colleagues this evening, and uh, I think they're just as excited as I am about this, on my immediate right, Tommy Hawkins. Now, a lot of people, if you're not familiar with Tommy, he's the third leading all-time UCLA scorer and the all-time leading rebounder, an All-American in 58 and 59. And now that I've sufficiently embarrassed him, uh, Tommy, what can we look for from uh, Notre Dame tonight? Well, you're going to see a lot of points. They average 92 points a game. And the amazing thing, Dana, is they limit the opposition to 56 points a game. So great defense, great scoring. But this is a test. It's early in the season. Both of these teams are undefeated. In addition to Tommy Hawkins uh, and all that kind of uh, stature sitting next to me, a little further down we have a man who uh, is described by everyone but himself as a living legend, the Wizard of Westwood himself, Coach John Wooden. Uh, Coach, we welcome you to the broadcast, and I know you've got some things to say about UCLA this evening. Well, thank you, Dana. I look at the ball game a little differently than I did a few years ago, and I'd rather enjoy it this way a little better. This way I don't have to be quite as... Uh, objective in a sense as I did when I was coaching. I can let my emotions take over a little bit in a sense. Uh, these games have been a great rivalry and it's been very good for intercollegiate basketball. Okay, that does it. You've got number three UC, uh, Notre Dame. You've got number five ranked UCLA and we're going to have a hell of a game. I can guarantee you. I'm Dana McCann. We'll be back with the start of the game right after this. You have to be dedicated, demanding, driven. It took Dotson to design the one and only King Cab. Up to 11 cubic feet of storage behind the seats. Try finding that in any other small pickup. Keep on thinking big, Dotson. Excuse me, champ. Great fight. Now, we'd like to take away your Schlitz and have you endorse our beer. No. You want to take away my gusto? <laughs> Say, you tickle me. <laughs> you want to take away my Schlitz, my gusto? Well, I'm going to play Picasso. And put you on the canvas. <laughs> You're going to be down for a count so long, they're going to use a calculator. <laughs> take away my gusto. If you don't have Schlitz, you don't have gusto. Probably you don't have beer. Schlitz. express our thanks to everyone involved with the Notre Dame network, including all our network affiliates and the great people at Notre Dame, and especially to Jim Ronan and Herman Kay, two of Notre Dame's great alumni. Tommy Hawkins, before this game, we were talking about the, the guards matchup and how exciting that ought to be. I understand we've already got one little switch in that. Yes, we have. Jeff Carpenter will be starting for the University of Notre Dame in place of Rich Brennan. Now, Brennan course, sprained his ankle. Yes, he did, and uh, he missed the Northwestern game. He practiced last night here at Bali Pavilion. However, the ankle is still a little sore. He will see playing time tonight, though. But Jeff Carpenter will be starting for Notre Dame and guard. We're going to go to the floor now for the introduction. 
as you can undoubtedly hear, the fans are all out tonight and they're ready to try to root the Bruins on. Well, the coach is smiling here and we've got John Wooden with us. They're 12,000 strong here, right, John? Yes, and uh, uh, Digger has that way with the fans and he cheers them on, whether he's at home or whether he's on the road. And uh, so they'll give him a lot of noise, but actually they kind of like it. Flowers, of course, a uh, key in that UCLA defense and offense. Well, certainly he is. He'll be guarding David Greenwood, of course. Flowers is the best defensive. I'm very happy to have Bill Lambeer back. Oh, so big. 6'11", about 250 pounds, and he is a ball in there. He's from this area, Palace Verdes. Governor is going to start. And there's Duck Williams who rounds out the starting guards. Duck, of course, uh, the leader. Team captain, the leader, the leading scorer on the team, averaging about 18 points a game. Now for Notre Dame, uh, again, we got Carpenter uh, instead of Branding. Uh, we've got uh, the other guard. And now he's barely here, so he's tough already. Notre Dame fans are out in force here tonight, too. They really are. I was surprised to see at least the 2,000 of them over at a three game dinner that they had at the Student Union here at UCLA. And they do the best they can, but boy, I tell you, UCLA people are vocal. Here they the go, ball UCLA. Ball. That's a big man. That's David Greenwood. He's 6'9", lazy, hits inside, outside. You know, uh, Notre Dame has such a great following all over the country, and I think that's witnessed by, if you look at the players on the Notre Dame team, there are 14 listed in the press box. And they come from 13 different states. Only two players are from the same state. They have two players from Ohio, and the other uh, uh, 12 of the 14 listed come from different states. There's Greg Simpson in number 31, and before him, Kiki Vandaway. Roy Lee Hamilton there. I had a chance to talk with Roy yesterday. He said he's up and ready, and he's, he's predicting a great game for himself. As quick as they come, a great penetrator. There's a great outside shooter there in Raymond Thompson. And he's the only uh, senior. That's right. He's the only senior on the squad, and it'll be interesting tonight. I'm certain he's going to be on uh, Williams, and uh, uh, Raymond is considered UCLA's finest defensive player, and uh, Williams is the leading scorer for Notre Dame, and that should be very interesting to watch. Coach, how about the defense? What can we expect UCLA to come out in? UCLA, in all probability, will stick pretty close to a straight man-to-man. -man. They'll be using zone principles, floating on the weak side, and they'll be helping out inside against the big man. But uh, I feel relatively certain that he'll stick to the man-to-man. -man. Of course, they're going to press down. Okay. <laughs> and naturally, the Notre Dame fans can expect that we'll see what uh, Tommy referred to the other day as Digger's Claw and Scratch defense. That's right. It's a clawing man-to-man. -man. If they do go to a zone, it will be a 2-3 formation. The Digger likes that man-to-man -man defense, and they are ready, and the fans are up and vocal. All right, let's set these lineups for you again. Jumping center for the Fighting Irish is going to be Bill Beer. At the guards, we've got Carpenter and Williams. At the forwards, Batten and Flowers. UCLA, it's Greenwood and Vanderway. Dick Sims jumping out front, Hamilton and Townsend. And we're just about to get underway. There we go. Tap controlled by David Greenwood of UCLA. Dave goes outside immediately to Hamilton. That's Kiki Vanderway, for those of you who are trying to get your bearings and learn these players' names. Townsend. Big Sims comes out to the top of the key. There's that flying defense you're talking about, Tommy. That's right, they're busy. They keep their hands moving. And of course, UCLA, a lot of movement, and they try not to plug up the center. As you see, they keep their area Kiki through. Vanderway, a move to the hoop. It's off the glass. Rebound pulled down by Dave Batten. Dave, I would say, is probably uh, one of the stronger rebounding forwards uh, around anywhere today, Tommy. He certainly is, and he's needed in there because UCLA is a jumping team. They will fast break, as you see. Roy Hamilton had to pull up because he didn't have a whole lot of help there. Good outlet pass on the other end, incidentally, by Gig Sims, who pulled down the short shot by Duck Williams. This is Roy Hamilton again coming around to the left. Inside, Greenwood, the big man. No good. They're starting out a little cold here, Coach. Yes, both teams have been shooting exceptionally well, but neither team has been up, uh, up against quite as good a defense, I don't believe, as they're going to be tonight. Coming into this game, UCLA had been shooting 58% from the floor and Notre Dame 55%. There again, a lid on the basket. They can't seem to get it. A second re rebound pulled down by Gig Sims. Long pass, Greenwood, no good. 
Pulled down there by Bill Lambeer, the big man they're really happy to have back at South Bend this year. I believe he's pulled down three defensive rebounds already. He's strong in there, Coach, and has no reservations about throwing that 250 pounds around. Doug Williams up top to Carpenter. Now, you'll notice Notre Dame will have an open center. Lambeer can hit that outside jump. Lambeer shoots exceptionally well outside for a big man. With just about two minutes gone in the game, we have no score now, and certainly that is not indicative of the kind of shooting we've seen this year from either team. Backdoor to Townsend. He feed pass underneath the band away and stuck it through. There's your first score. 17.53 left in the game. And first a beautiful half pass uh, from Townsend seeing him under there and getting there with a the bounce pass the only way he could have. Carpenter again starting in place of Branning. All right, there you have the answer. That's a 15-footer from Dave Batten nodding it at 2-2. Two to two. Well, you notice that Carpenter is picking up uh, Hamilton on the other side of that half court line. They don't want him to get set up. Okay, there's our first foul of the game called against Carpenter. He's got a tough job. Here comes Gixson, and here's Carpenter coming over trying to take away that pass down into Hamilton and foul in the process. Of course, you're watching two of the quickest men in college basketball, and look at Carpenter there pushing through the big men. He wants to stay as close to Hamilton as he possibly can. That's not a bad idea either. I notice he's trying to drive Hamilton, who's left-handed. He's trying to uh, drive him to the right most of the time, too. Big save by Townsend right there as Gig Sims' pass went a little errant. Hamilton, Sims, top of the key. Boy, Hamilton's moving the baseline. He's good. And now UCLA coming down court, and we got a foul on Roy Hamilton. Coach, what about the full court pressure that we, we see in a situation like that? Are there situations when you would apply it and times again when you would not? Yes, but uh, uh, generally speaking, after a score, you're always going to apply it. And then the other situations will uh, depend upon certain uh, points in the game and uh, certain personnel. I'm sure that uh, Coach Cunningham was a little disappointed on Hamilton's foul. He reached in, and you must not Back. reach in. Okay, we had backdoor to Dave Batten there. They set it up very well, and uh, it was, it was goaltending on David Greenwood. Here's a play. Batten in, Greenwood up, and of course, high above the rim, both of them. Carpenter's got his hands full tonight, working on somebody as quick as Hamilton. Here's Lambeer. Knocking the ball out of bounds, it's going to remain in the possession of UCLA. Now there's the value of a big man inside. Lampier helping out on Kiki Vandeway in that situation and swatting the ball out of bounds. Well, that's defensive help, and you have to have teamwork on defense just as you have to have on offense, and sometimes people forget that. Coach, how many times have you said it's defense that wins ball games? Well, I think defense wins championships. There's no question in my mind about it. There he is again, same spot, same result. That's Roy Hamilton. He predicted he was going to have a big game, and it, early on as any indication, he was a pretty good prophet, Tommy. Excellent outside, quick shooter. He's got to keep Hamilton to the right, I'm certain. If he comes over here and shoots with that left hand. He... I've watched Batten since he was a freshman, and what a developed kid this is. He has really come around. He's a steady, assured player. Again, 6-9, an excellent outside shot, Dave Batten. He's got two of those jumpers now. The score is 6-6 with 15, a little less than 16 minutes. Rebound, offensive rebound. Sims cannot get it. Finally, Bill Lambeer comes up with it, gets it outside to Carpenter. Carpenter, he's being guarded at the other end by Hamilton. Dave Batten pulls up short this time. Back to Duck Williams. From the corner, as Bruce Flowers goes to the floor, he's had a little exchange under there with Kiki Vanderway, Tommy. <laughs> he looked up at Kiki as if to say, no, was that necessary? You've uh, had some experience with Kiki, too, haven't you, Tommy? Kiki gives uh, Sims and Wilkes, yes. Townsend, real goal. quick reaction. <laughs> Score nodded at eight with 15 minutes left in the first half. We'll get back to those three players shortly. Okay. Bruce Flowers feeds it back outside to Batten. There's Batten working through to the middle, no good. And the ball rolls off the foot of Bruce Flowers. You really can't believe he couldn't control that one. 
Cook with both teams, I'm impressed with their offensive sets. They seem to be working it, and they seem to be disciplined. They're using pretty good movement, and for this uh, uh, time of the year, they're not really taking bad shots. When they didn't whip, hit early, it wasn't because they were bad shots. They just were a little, a little tired, I think, to begin with. And they talk about that, and then they throw one away. <laughs> they tried to give and go to Roy Hamilton, and unfortunately, the pass was just a little long. Jeff Carpenter bringing the ball up floor. He's left-handed also. Move to the bucket. Left-hand layup, and it's good. We'll find move through the middle there, Tommy. He is. He, he's, very, he's not known for his scoring, but he's a heck of a quarterback out there, and he will play defense, and he's rugged. Roy Hamilton again. That's his sixth point. Carpenter needs some help coming down here in this forward spot because Hamilton is getting free and shooting that jump shot. That's three in a row from that spot. Dave Batten handling the ball a lot for Notre Dame. Duck Williams up. Gets his own rebound, puts it in, and he's fouled. Now that's where a little man uh, really has to work. Here we go. The rebound comes down. Duck Williams puts it back off the glass. And he's only 6'3", and he's in there with guys 6'9", 6'10", 6'11". Tommy, he's quick, and he moves quickly, not only uh, as far as his foot speed, but his quick reaction, and he's right up again. Yes, he is. Who, who is that foul on? I'm afraid he didn't see it. Was it Dick Sims? Somebody will get that information to us, I'm sure. Okay, the score is 13 for Notre Dame, 10 for UCLA, and we've got about 13 minutes, 40 seconds left in the first half. Greenwood can't buy one. Vandeweghe off balance. Bill Lambeer comes down with another defensive rebound. Lambeer's been averaging seven rebounds a game, but he'll surpass that by a lot tonight because he has to work. He knows what he has to do in there. UCLA are a very good jumping team. Duck Williams. Roy Hamilton doing everything for UCLA. Comes up with the rebound, gets things started. I'm sure Lambeer is fired up uh, tonight, too, because he spent his early days in high school in uh, Los Angeles. As a, matter of As a matter of fact, Coach, Lambeer's last game in Pauley Pavilion, previous to this one, was a championship game for the CIF, I believe, as he led his team there. Gig Sims, he's got a good outside touch. Can't buy it that time, though. Jeff Carpenter looks like he's getting a little tired to me, Tommy. Uh, he was saying something to the bench a minute ago. He's got to play heads up, both ends of the floor. He can't relax when he's guarding Hamilton, and he's a team quarterback, so that means he has to be every place. So he hasn't been starting, so he could get tired. Okay, good well, defensive good effort. Defensive help again. That's Bill Lambeer again, certainly a major factor in the early going in this game. Flowers, little head fake, back out front to Jeff Carpenter, who's being guarded again by Roy Hamilton. Lambeer's doing it all. There's his 18-footer. Yeah, he's going to surprise a lot of people because you look at him, he's a big guy, and you won't think that he can shoot as well from the outside as he does, but he's a good shooter. With a score 19 for Notre Dame, 10 for UCLA, we're going to pause one minute for this message from your local station. Excuse me, ma'am. We'd like to take away their Schlitz and have them try our beer. You want to take away their Schlitz? You want to take away their Gusto? <laughs> You're cute. Dumb, but cute. You want to take away their Schlitz? Their Gusto? You're going to end up a cornerstone in a high rise. <laughs> They're going to turn you into an off-ramp on the interstate. Take away their Gusto. If you don't have Schlitz, you don't have Gusto. Mama, you don't have beer. Schlitz. Open the door to freedom. Don't let the everyday bring you down. Coachman lets you get away. Let you stop and look around. Open the door to freedom with a Coachman Van Camper. They're fun, versatile, and Coachman is America's best-selling name in RVs. The sunshine of America shines down on everyone. Open the door to freedom. Coachman is the one. Okay. 
It's 19 to 10 now, Notre Dame over UCLA. Coach, what's UCLA got to do a little differently defensively to, to keep Notre Dame from breaking open like that? Well, they're giving them too much time to set up. They're getting that movement across underneath and coming out, and they're having time to turn and get squared away toward the basket. They're going to have to put a little more pressure, I think, on the, uh, on the passer and uh, make the man come a little farther out to get the ball. You know, Lambeer, I remember him two years ago as a freshman. He shot very well from outside. But his strength tonight has been his help on defense. That has surprised me very much. That's very true. Uh, as far as rebounding down on this end, he's been great. He's blocked a couple of shots. A uh, Van de Wey has taken. And inside, if you can take away a team's inside game, then you elevate them to beating you from outside. And you don't want to depend on just outside shooting to get there. Looking for a little uh, help up front as we get back to action, Tommy. We've got a substitution for UCLA. Uh, uh, James Wilkes has come into the lineup. He's uh, said by some to be the best defensive ball player. Good jumper from Dorsey High School here in Los Angeles. Rich Browning also in the game for Notre Dame. Jeff Carpenter taking the breather. Loose ball. Dave Batten has it. There's Wilkes with his quick hands knocking the ball out of bounds. Uh, Wilkes has come off the bench and he's done a tremendous job for Gary Cunningham as you see he's sitting there with Jim Herrick and uh, Larry Farmer, his two assistant coaches. Uh, Wilkes is a strong rebounder and they feel that he may be their best defensive forward. There he is again. It amazes me today, Dana and Coach Wooden, the shooting abilities, outside shooting abilities of these big men. Steals the pass inside. Can't quite come down with it. So that's Ray Townsend. But Lambeer goes up and gets the carom this time. That's about four block shots for Lambeer. Jack Williams, long range. Rich Branning, three on one against him. Coach, that's a tough situation coming down. And you know you're on defense. You've got three men coming down on you. What's an ideal formation coming in like that. Well, generally speaking, you get the ball in the center and hit the one man, uh, one on either side, whichever side happens to be open. It's uh, uh, discouraging when you have three on one and don't even get a shot. That's true. <laughs> Notre Dame patient, Dana, on offense. Looking for the good shot, taking no errant shots. Rich Branning come in playing on that bad ankle. There's Bruce Flowers. Rich Branding comes in and he slows things down a little bit. They're giving Jeff Carpenter a breather. And here's a freshman I've been waiting to look at, Tommy Hawkins, checking into the lineup for Notre Dame, uh, uh, Kelly Tribuca. And, of course, he is a freshman. He's 6'7". He is the son of former Notre Dame quarterback Frank Tribuca. And they tell me that when Kelly comes into the game, something happens. He's aggressive. He's come off the bench. He's been in double figures. Just watch him. Number 44. Okay, Rick Branding get call, gets called for the foul on the arm of uh, Roy Hamilton who comes in. Uh, Hamilton, of course, uh, embodies the quickness that you want in a guard. And the penetration ability, Coach, doesn't he go to that hoop well? He's probably the best uh, penetrator that uh, UCLA has on their team. Now, there's a situation where Branding, he didn't know that he should never have reached in there. Uh, Lambeer or Batten, I'm sure, not sure which one, had, had uh, shifted over, and they had that shot blocked. Uh huh. Hoping to get a little help against uh, Bill Lambeer underneath. UCLA has made a change, and into the lineup comes Daryl Allens, a 6'9 center, uh, who's a sophomore. He's a young kid. He's, they say he's got a whole lot of promise. Very strong uh, youngster, and didn't uh, get to play hardly at all last year as a freshman, but uh, they feel in practice this year, he's looked very good. You know, he just started playing uh, basketball as a freshman in high school at Linwood High School in Compton, California. He's big and strong, 6'9", about 230 pounds. Baton, Rich Branning, Chuck Williams, there he is again. That time he's good. Scores now 23 to 11. We've got just under 10 minutes left in the first half. You let Duck Williams square away at the basket like that, and there's a pretty good chance he's going to make it from that distance. Well, he was consistent last year. He averaged about 18.1 points per game. And do you know what he's hitting from the field this year? 62%. He's really a tremendous outside shooter. In the four games this year, his scoring average is just about what it was for the entire season last year. And I noticed the same thing is true for uh, Batten and the same thing is true for Branning. Tripuka, there he goes. There he is. He makes things happen, Tommy. He certainly does. 
Kelly is from Essex Fall, New Jersey, and he's averaging 12 for a game, not bad for a freshman, and hitting 72% from the field. There's Allen's up at the top of the key. James Hook knocked away there. Bill Ambeer again. Greenwood, they need some help up front from Greenwood. Notre Dame beating them up front at this point. Greenwood needs to score because he needs to keep Lambeer busy. He's got a 12-point advantage for Notre Dame at this point. One of the few shots Lambeer has missed so far tonight. Roy Hamilton. Dave Batten outside again. Coach, I can remember if you were 6'10 and you went out the forward to take a shot like that when I was playing, you could be bent. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Tommy, that's just because some people couldn't shoot outside when they were that big. <laughs> you turned to tell me so. <laughs> present, present company accepted. <laughs> there you have the ambition and the drive of a Rich Branning who on a sore ankle is still going to the floor and a Roy Hamilton who, who's not afraid to go down to the boards either. There you see them both going for the ball. He's a fight in the corner. Both scrappers. Both scrappers. Branding. We've got a substitution in the game. Or number 42 has come in for the Fighting Irish. That, of course, is uh, uh, Bill Hanslet, who's a sophomore. Richard Branning would like to do well here because he played his high school ball here in uh, uh, Los Angeles, too, and is a fine basketball player. He certainly is. He's from Huntington Beach, Marina High School. That's Ray Townsend. We got a foul underneath, and that foul's going to be on Bruce Flowers. Uh, Bruce Flowers is back in the game. He came in for Bill Lambeer, and he has a job of guarding David Greenwood right now. game that I expected at this point. I did not expect, to be honest, a 12-point advantage for Notre Dame uh, 13 minutes into the game. Is, is this what you were looking for, Coach? Not at all. I didn't think either team would have uh, much of a lead uh, uh, throughout the game, as a matter of fact. I thought it would be fairly close uh, all the way throughout the game. If you had to point to a difference, Dana, it would probably be Bill Lambert's interior play early in the game. And he's outside shooting. I, I uh, didn't hurt at all. He's playing both ends of the court. Now on the floor now for UCLA with the ball. That's Roy Hamilton remaining in the game. That's James Wilkes, number 35. And out front now, Brad Holland, number 14. There's Wilkes, turn around jumper. That's a good one. That's a good jumper, and he hits that consistently. That's you, what they need. They need to work the ball inside a little bit. UCLA was very patient, worked the ball around, and finally got it in for a uh, pretty good percentage shot. Branding, Trapuca, Williams, uh, Hanslick, and Flowers on the floor for Notre Dame. There's Rich Branning with a jumper from the top of the key. When I coached the high school, the California high school all-stars against the Russian national junior team, Branning hit the winning shot for me in the second game that we played them. I'll always remember him for that. He's a tremendous performer and a good heady ball player. Okay, we've got three seconds called against against uh, UCLA. I think Daryl Allums was camped in there a little too long. UCLA trying to be patient and trying to get some inside game to go with the outside jumpers. Uh, Tommy, you must remember, uh, UCLA must remember that when you get behind in a game, you must not hurry to catch up or you'll get further behind. You have to just continue to play your game with patience. Mm -hmm. Hanslick in the corner, looking for somebody to give the ball to. Finally, Trapuca comes out. He's working on James Wilkes at this point. And we've got a foul called inside. An offensive foul. This one on Rich Branning. <laughs> and Branning, you'll watch, you'll see what happens here. Um, it's a it's a hold up right here at the top of the key is what it is. It's actually, uh, you're on offense and you're trying to get through and break through and make your point and you can't do it. You try to hold the player there and you get caught from time to time. So UCLA will control it and come down. It'll be interesting to see what they have set up. It looks like a, a diamond type thing with Allen's that type ropes right here at the forward and David Greenwood also breaking underneath. That's Allen's to Greenwood over in the corner. Greenwood move at the top of the key. Jump shot up. No good. 
And we've got a foul on Bruce Flowers. Incidentally, uh, we've got all kinds of substitutions coming in now. A moment ago. Here comes David around on the jumper. Bruce comes up to block it. Catches him right on the shooting arm there. I tell you, the, the replay can show you a lot of things. As I watched it uh, at the first place, I really didn't think it touched him. And the replay in slow motion did show that he did to get him on the arm. Mm -hmm. On the floor now for the Fighting Irish, we've got Carpenter, Batten, Flowers, Lamb, Beer, and Williams. They've rested their big guys a couple minutes, and they've come right back with them. Yeah, you have to. I think there was a lot of tension and a uh, pretty good pace to start the game. Okay, Greenwood hits them. So it's 29-19 with 6-10 left in the first half. That's Jeff Carpenter, Bruce Flowers. Dave Batten just now back into the game. Lambeer being guarded by Daryl Allen. He pulls it down. Carpenter. His pass underneath the flowers, batted away by Wilkes. Good, good hands there again. And Carpenter had a good idea. As you can see, it goes out to Batten. Batten lifts up, sees Carpenter down in the corner. He sees flowers breaking underneath the basket, but UCLA got back to swat it out of bounds. Wilkes called, of course, for reaching in. It was very evident in the two or three minutes that uh, Lambeer was out of the game, how much Notre Dame needs him. That's true. Lambeer seems real comfortable just about anywhere. They can bring him up top and, and work with him there or stay underneath. Dave Batten seems to be comfortable shooting from anywhere tonight. There's an 18-footer that he... Duck Williams sneaks in for the steal there and unfortunately can't control the ball, but his, his quickness and he just kind of laid back and moved in when nobody's waiting for him, Tommy. I like uh, Batten's temperament on the court. You know, he takes it easy. He doesn't seem to get overly excited. Plays his game, takes his shots with ease and confidence. He should be real grateful this year for the return. There's Brett Holland, number 14. Should be real happy for the return of Bill Ambeer. It frees him up a lot. It, it takes away a lot of the responsibility for rebounding and, and lets him play his game a lot better. All of the bumping and pushing that goes on underneath. Dave Batten got called for that ball underneath. Here's a shot, and there's Batten coming up, and he went over the shoulder, as you can see, of David Green Greenwood. Never fails, does it, Tommy? You talk about a player and, and, and how he's getting help in <laughs> rebounding, and then he fouls somebody going up for a rebound. These are the things that kind of hurt you, too. That could be a four-point turnover, because you, Notre Dame missed a fairly easy basket and had a foul. Lost the basket, they'll come down to the one and one. And of course, we're in the bonus right now, one and one, and David Greenwood making advantage of it. And he gets them both. That's four in a row for him. That brings us down to an eight point deficit with five minutes left in the first half. Jeff Carpenter coming up floor. The UCLA fans coming to life a little bit. They like the way the team's coming back right now. Batten again. That's the way to keep a team from coming back. Now, Batten is getting loose out there. Coach, I think a little bit more than Cunningham would have is this team see this guy shooting the ball. Uh, that's right. The offense that they're running and getting the screens down and coming around them quick, they're letting them get him a, uh, a little too close in to get the shot. Will forces one from the top of the key. The rebound there by Bruce Flowers. We've got four and a half minutes left in the first half. A 10-point difference, 33-23. Notre Dame over UCLA. And you keep in mind that Notre Dame is the only non-conference team to beat UCLA here at Pauley Pavilion. One of only three teams to beat them here, as a matter of fact. The other two from the Pac-8 are uh, uh, Oregon and also, you. Uh, let's see, did USC beat you here, folks? Yes, USC won yes. a game here. Batten underneath. <laughs> Battling against Dale Allen's and James Wilkes. He snakes one up and in. That makes it a 12-point difference again. Bruce Flowers doing a good job on blocking out underneath, and David Greenwood call for the foul. With, with time on the floor, the, floor, the score is 35-23, to 23, Notre Dame over UCLA. Let's pause for this word now from Coachman Recreational Vehicles. Open the door to freedom. Don't let the everyday bring you down. Coachman lets you get away. Let you stop and look around. Open the door to freedom with a Coachman Motorhome. They're plush, luxurious, and Coachman is America's best-selling name in RVs. The sunshine of America shines down on everyone. Open the door to freedom. Coachman is the one. Sir, 
Sir, what you heard? Oh, Gunner in the car. Oh, well, you don't have to run. Oh, gotta run. Oh, no, if you had an Avis wizard number, you could walk. You gotta walk. Call toll-free and let our wizard system do the running. Just show a major credit card, license, sign, and get the car. I don't have to run through airports? Not with Avis. I can walk through airports. I'm walking through airports. We'd like to remind... We'd like to remind you that this broadcast is a presentation of the Notre Dame Basketball Television Network. Any reproduction or rebroadcast of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the network is prohibited. 35-23, Tommy. Uh, again, no, no one expected this kind of a game at this point. I didn't, don't think anyone expected the kind of performance we're getting from Bill Lambeer, and that seems to pick up the slack now. Yeah, he certainly has. If you look at the player that you would think would lead this team, it would be Doc Williams, but of course, he hasn't been a real factor here, but has hit some good outside jumpers. Notre Dame basically running a good moving open offense and getting good open jump shots. They're getting a lot of screens uh, down underneath and coming out off of them quickly and just making quick moves and getting a good shot. They do a lot of picking down, I see, Coach. Uh, it's an integral part of their offense. It's pretty much of a passing game, and that uh, you pick down a lot in the passing game. And there's a keen pass. Back door, Dave Batten gets another pair, and that's 37-23. Roy Hamilton working on Jeff Carpenter out front. Holland and Carpenter, uh, Hamilton and uh, Holland, rather, at the guards for UCLA. We've got Wilkes and Greenwood at the forwards, and uh, Gig Sims back in his center. There's Wilkes sneaking in for a pair. Wilkes seems really comfortable operating inside, Coach. Yes, he does. He's come a long ways uh, since last year, and I think Coach Cunningham has given him a lot of confidence and showed that he has confidence in him, and he's taken to it. Batten, Flowers, top of the key, Lambeer. He'll shoot from there from time to time and make them. Flowers in the corner now. Notre Dame just looking for a good shot, working the ball around. They're in no hurry now. They hold a 12-point lead. I'll tell you one thing, you've got to be in shape to stay with that offense because Notre Dame has that ball hopping and there's a lot of picking and cutting going on. The basket's going to count. Carpenter really drove in there and challenged Gig Sims and got away with it. Here he goes, left-hander down the center. Turns his back to the big man on 6'9", lays it up over his head, off the glass and in. Fantastic play. So good body balance in the air there and got the shot away. There you see Digger, he's got to be pleased with what they're doing now, talking to Bruce Flowers, who's come out. Checking into the lineup, uh, Stan Wilcox. Stan Wilcox, a freshman coming in, huh? From North Babylon, New York, where he hit something like 70% of his shots last year. Well, Digger's been playing a lot of players in the uh, early games. Been playing uh, anywhere from nine to 10 players a game, which is amazing. Wilkes Townsend's back in the game now, as is Gig Sims. Townsend pulls up for the jumper, 15 feet, good as gold. That makes it 39 to 27 with a minute and 54 left in the first half. Defense, 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 defense. Come on, you guys, knock it off, man. Getting a little rough inside there, Dana. A little pushing going on back and forth. Townsend called for the foul there. We'll see what's going on. You see, he was coming through the pick there and kind of gave Big Bill Lambeer a clout. Well, that was that screen down again in that passing game, and uh, uh, Lambeer's a little hard to get around. <laughs> okay, Lambeer. Again, they're just looking for the good shot. They're running the offense probably the way Digger wanted it when he put it on the back, the blackboard. A lot of rotation, a lot of picking down. Look at the center, usually open. You know, there's no single pivot man that's standing there with his big mid in the air. Notre Dame loses that one on an earned pass. Lambeer a little incredulous. He's pointing at people and saying, you, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Holland and Townsend at the guards for UCLA. Holland inside to Wilkes, tries a quick pass to Townsend, batted away by Batten. Who, who goes and gets the ball after he hits it. Excellent play uh, by Batten. They had him beaten on the back door play. Townsend was in there, and Batten uh, knocked the pass in the air and retrieved it. 
just under a minute left, 39-27. Notre Dame still on top. They break him around, pick down, and down the center. It's plenty of movement. Coach, is there any way to properly defense this type of offense? It, it makes you move, but keeps you spread. You've got to do a lot of switching. Keep your big men down and do a lot of switching. Uh, some uh, coaches like to zone this, but I, I didn't believe that it was necessary to zone it. I felt that you have to keep your big men down and do a lot of switching. Ball picked up by James Wilkes, who's then fouled by number 42, uh, Bill Hanslick from Notre Dame. We've got 16 seconds left in the first half to score again, 39-27. Okay, there's James Wilkes picking it up, and then you see Hanslick coming over. He thought he had a chance at taking it away maybe getting a quick, easy hoop. It didn't work out that way. We are in the bonus. It is a one and one. Yeah, he capitalizes on the first half of it. That means he's going to get a chance at the second. This can pull him within 10 points with 16 seconds left in the first half. It's up and in. It, the deficit's 10 right now. Coach, 10 points too much to come from, back from in the second half? Oh, no. I remember some games when either team, uh, or each team has been farther uh, behind than that and has come back. Jeff Carpenter called for a foul away from the ball. He, he just can't believe it. Clear control foul there. That really hurts you when you lose the ball without getting a chance to score. There's Wilcox there down. And the, the foul, of course, away from the play. Townsend. Wilkes. At the buzzer, it's no good. That's the end of the first half. The score is 39-29. Uh, Notre Dame on top to everyone's surprise and uh, well to the surprise uh, to the extent that it's it's 10 points at the half at everyone's surprise to the surprise of John Wood with the score 39 <laughs> 29 we're going to pause for this word from Dotson at Dotson economy is not our only mission the Dotson B210 GX from its all steel unibody up it's Dotson driven to deliver the greatest economy of all, quality. Nobody demands one from a Datsun. A Datsun, we are driven. Hang tough, Datsun. Excuse me, sir. We'd like to take away your Schlitz and have you try our beer. Shut up. Shut up. Down, baby. I'll handle this. You want to take away my Schlitz? You want to take away my gusto? <laughs> You're the first person that ever made me laugh. You want to take away my schlitz? My gusto? <laughs> Say hello to your lunch. Take away my gusto. If you don't have schlitz, you don't have gusto. You don't have beer. Coming into this game, as Coach John Wooden and Tommy Hawkins said, Everyone expected a, a tight game. You have number three, Notre Dame, number three ranked in the country. You have them playing number five ranked UCLA. Everybody thinks it's going to be an exceedingly close contest. Good good defensive basketball, a lot of shooting. But And, and again, it, their averages coming into this game indicated that we would see a lot, of, a lot more scoring. 58% for UCLA coming into the game, 55% for Notre Dame. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't seen that, unfortunately, for UCLA so far. We'll be back with uh, another little bit of a recap, see if we can find out what the shooting statistics are for the first half. And after that, we're going to hear from Tommy and Coach Wood and Digger Phelps, uh, a tape that Tommy did before the game. We'll have all that right after this local message. Stay with us. <laughs> 